Well, hey, everybody. Glad you joined us here for Wednesdays at Home. Uh, my name is Lauren. I'm one of the pastors here at Colonial Church. This is only the second week we're doing this. Going to do something a little bit different today. I have invited one of my best friends on the planet, a guy who's way smarter than me in multiple areas. Uh, in all honesty, a brother and someone I really, I cherish our, our friendship. I look up to him. He's a mentor. Uh, his name's RJ. RJ, thanks for joining us from Colorado, man. Lauren, thank you for having me today. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people. How, how, how y'all doing in Texas? <laughs> oh, you can try with the accent. I, they're probably just giggling at you. Um, yeah, okay. RJ's from Montana originally, and okay. we became friends when I lived in the north side of Denver and attended the same church. We were on a teaching team together, um, and so you guys are used to my preaching. Uh, RJ would bring uh, a very, uh, just a sharp academic uh, aspect of his teaching. He digs deep into the scriptures. He's a scholar. Uh, he's a teacher. He was a longtime professor on the college level, and uh, it was it was actually really fun for me just to be myself because I'm not I'm not a professor. And I think, it, I think it was good for our people to have a couple different voices like ours too, RJ. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, also, RJ was with me, or I was with him, I should say, in his neck of the woods last summer. Let me see if I can share a picture. This was me and RJ last summer in Montana. Uh, RJ took me on a, was it a six-day backpacking trip? Seven-day? Six-day backpacking trip. Six-day yep. backpacking trip. We carried... 40 something pounds, 50 pounds on our back. I don't know how many miles. Did we figure out how many miles we went? Yeah, we went uh, We went 26 miles. 26? I knew it was a long way. Yep. Uh, I just tried to keep up with him. RJ is a marathoner and uh, he's older than me and yet could take me in, in every physical aspect. So that was, it was a great trip. I don't know how much I, I've shared with our people since I got back last summer, RJ, but um, I know I've shared a little bit. Uh, what a great trip. What a great time to get away and no phones and no no work to do and just be with the creator and his beautiful creation to be with each other and camp and hike and uh, fish. Uh, it was really fun. It's really fun. Absolutely. Yep. For, for sure, Lauren. Yep. Well, um, I'm grateful that you that you are with us today. I'm, I'm going to take this picture off if I can figure out how to do that. Um, and I want to just hear from you a little bit. I want our people to um, get some practical thoughts, uh, some tips, some insight, uh, specifically because not only are you a scholar and a, just a student of scripture, so you're going to be grounded in that, in, in the things you bring to us, but you're, you're a bit of a psychologist. You're a longtime practicing therapist. Mm -hmm. um, you've done a lot of work on yourself and helped a lot of other people, and so when I think about the things we're going through right now that are unique, um, the way we're homebound, the fears and anxieties we're dealing with, um, all those kind of things, I, I would love to hear some insight from you. So why don't you first tell us a little bit about um, just your experience and education maybe a little bit, maybe your background and what, what even gives you some credibility in this area. Uh, and then I'd love to just ask you a few simple questions. You betcha. Uh, yes, yeah, Lauren, as you said, I've got, I do have a background. I did get my undergraduate degree in psychology and then went on to get my Master of Divinity, but a number of years ago started a private practice uh, that's now almost 30, uh, about 25 years uh, worth of, uh, of uh, practice uh, in private practice. So working with folks, uh, also, you know, because of how old I am, I've been through a number of stressful times. One of the, probably the most significant one was the tragedy of uh, Columbine. Mm. So I spent a lot of time working with uh, post-traumatic stress uh, with the folks that went through that, both immediately uh, with the Denver area youth pastors and then uh, more long-term in my practice. So I've been a part of several, uh, I guess, crisis types of situations. But honestly, Lauren, I have never seen anything like this that we're facing now in, in the world. Not Vietnam, not 9-11, not Columbine. This is, in my opinion, probably the most significant long-term event that we will face. Wow. And that's saying a lot because you're like 114 years old. So I'm at least, I am 114 years old. And I thought about that often when I was walking ahead of you on the trail. <laughs> 
just begging me to try to keep up. I know, I know. Yeah. I just tee it up for you. <laughs> yeah, you're well done, Lauren. You know what? In all seriousness, you've been around long enough. Um, I, I want to remind our people that are watching that are longtime colonial folks, you are buddies and partners in ministry with Rick Thompson. Tell us about your connection with Rick. He's our form, one of our former pastors a long time back at Colonial. Absolutely. Yeah, Rick and I are close friends. We're members of the, uh, he's the president of Global Action, of which I am part of now working with Rick. And uh, we've been together now for several years. And he sends his greetings, by the way. I told him I was going to be on a, uh, a Zoom call today with you guys, and, and he sends his best. That but awesome. yeah, Rick and I are, are close and uh, he's, uh, he's a great guy as, uh, for global action as well as what he does at Council Road there in Oklahoma City. Fantastic. I know, that, I know that's a, a <clears throat> connection for a bunch of our people. Well, tell me this. Um, I, know, I know the folks living in Denver, where you are, are very much in the same boat we are. Um, they're kind of stuck at home. A lot of people working from home. Um, First and foremost, just the, the, the isolation, the separation. We can't come together as churches. We can't come together in the community in the ways we're used to. Could you speak to just being isolated and being lonely and, and, and what that does to our minds and our hearts and, uh, and what, how, how you might be able to help us with that? Yeah, I'm a, I'll speak about that in a minute, but let me back up a little bit, Lauren, and, and uh, put it into context of... of uh, to me, the overriding issue that we're struggling with, of which isolation is a part of, and of which isolation really contributes to. Okay. What we're talking about here is stress. Um, almost a century ago, there was a kind of an unknown researcher, actually he was an, a Hungarian endocrinologist, if I can say that, named Hans Selvi, who first took us in a new direction regarding something he called stress. And he defined stress back then as the nonspecific response of the body to the demand for change. And he took researchers and doctors in a whole new direction because what he pointed out was that when we experience these external pressures and sometimes internal pressures, it has a profound impact on our health. And I'll talk more about that later when I talk about solution. But what we're dealing with with, the, with this pandemic is one of the most difficult types of stress to deal with. There's four basic types of stress, and this one is called type B stress, and it refers to um, the kind of stress that's both unforeseeable and unavoidable. Mm. None of us saw this coming. It was like we all, as a planet, we got sucker punched by this uh, coronavirus, and now we're just in this slow-moving hurricane, as I think the governor of, of New York called it, where we can't get out of it, we're stuck. And none of us were prepared for it. And so there was, and probably still is for many of us, kind of a, kind of a level of shock. We're still trying to, to even understand this. Mm. My son-in-law is a doctor in the UC Health System down at Colorado Springs. And even before any of this became you know, mainstream, he was, he was warning us as his family, this thing is the real deal. And now we're, you know, we're, we're faced every day with just a barrage of information and we don't know what to believe and we don't know, uh, you know, we don't know what's true. We do know that now our freedom is severely limited and we now have a new definition of normal and we probably all realize that things are never going to be the same again. Mm. I have friends now that I know that have, um, have the coronavirus. And so for some of us, and I suspect for folks in your church, they know people now that have the, have the uh, COVID. So initially when it happens, you know, people respond different ways. Some people do isolate. Some people are stuck isolating um, just because that's the nature of this. And that's one of the characteristics. But the, the first thing that I want to cite, and then I also want to cite a little research about this, is that uh, stress like this ha has a profound impact on our health, on our personal health. And I don't wanna understate that. We have got to take care of ourselves and I'll talk more about that later because part of effective self-care is what we do with other people. But one of the things I wanna cite is that as I was preparing for our time together, I, I was reminded of a, of a tool that we use in counseling called the Holmes uh, Rahe Stress Chart. Basically, it was uh, developed decades ago by a guy who assigned different point values to different stressors in life. 
For example, the death of a or the the death of a spouse is worth a hundred points. Divorce is worth seventy five points, and it lists about fifty things. And you, what you do is you go down the list and you kind of identify which of these stressors affected you this past year. You add up the score, and if your score is over, say three hundred points, you're in serious red line, and you better get to a doctor or you better take some serious steps. To, to take care of yourself. Interestingly enough, though, when I went uh, on the home stress chart this morning, there was not uh, a worldwide pandemic. Uh, <laughs> didn't make the list, huh? Didn't even make the list. And yet I'm guessing it's probably toward in the top two. Mm. And that's the reality of it. And I share that because I don't want to minimize the impact, wh whatever you believe about this pandemic. Even if you're healthy or not, the impact on us in a, in a stressful way is, especially with type B stress, unforeseeable and unavoidable. So now we all have to adjust. We all have to figure out how we're gonna how we're gonna survive initially, and then how we're gonna uh, be a, in a healthier place uh, long term. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We'll speak to that then. What what are the ways we can and should respond to that kind of stress? What can we do? Well, you know, I think there, there, are no, there are a number of things we have to do. And I'm, I'm gonna put at the top of that list to take care of ourselves, uh, our, our health, and put that as, as just number one top priority. And if we're moms and dads, we need to do our best to take care of our kids. And part of the challenge with that is that when we get, and I'm gonna use the phrase sucker punched by something like this, it's easier to kind of go for the quick fix. Mm. You know, um, as much as I love Cheetos, they're not in the top four food group and they're not that good for me. <laughs> and as we know, and most of your folks know from my story, alcohol is not very good for me either. But that's what people do. They go for the quick fix. They go for the feel good. And some people I know that I've talked to are really struggling with their diets during this time. Mm. But what we need to be doing is eating healthy and eating uh, taking our vitamin B supplements, for example, because vitamin B is very helpful to deal with uh, an internal, our internal bodily response to, set, to uh, stress. So from a physical standpoint, taking care of ourselves. But let me, let me talk about the isolation piece, because that, that for some of us um, is huge. I know for you, Lauren, that's, you're, a, you're an extrovert. You, you need to be with, you need to connect. <laughs> I had a client yesterday, we were, I'm doing all of my counseling now online, and he was telling me how much he loves this, because he's a, an, an introvert in the extreme sense of the word. So he loves this. But the reality is, all of us need touches of some kind. We need connection of some kind, and we need to be able to talk to people about this. Mm. One of the worst things that we can do is, is to keep keep what we're feeling inside and some of us struggle with that because we think we ought to be able to figure this out ourselves but the truth is none of us have ever been here before we're kind of making this stuff up as we go so you know i think a lot of folks are really critical of the government and the medical profession for how they're they're trying to handle this but the reality of it is we've never been here before yeah that's a good word so you know, we need to be gracious and prayerful as we pray for our national leaders as they as they try and find a vaccine, as they try and use these uh, these medications, such as the anti-malarial drug that they've had some limited success with, and just pray that they'll find the right uh, the right cocktail for this. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I'm part of a recovery group uh, for those of us who are struggling with the alcohol addiction, and we. I have discovered for myself that I need to go there. I need to go into our online meeting just about every day. Mm. And I may never say anything, but I need people around me that understand what I'm feeling. Yeah. And I don't have to say it. Sometimes they'll say it and I'm going, I know exactly how that feels. Because mm. the problem when we isolate is that, um, in fact, I'll frame it in, a, in an expression we use in, in AA. We talk a lot about cleaning up the wreckage of our past. You know, for those of us that wreaked havoc when we were drinking, but a lot of us are trying to clean up the wreckage of our future. <laughs> what we're doing is we're awfulizing and we're what ifing it, and that's not helpful. Mm. One of the single biggest things we need to do during this time is to drop it down to a day at a time. Mm. 
Mm. Now, God, Jesus didn't forbid careful planning. What he did forbid was anxious planning. And often the what ifs are based on unhealthy fears. And verses like Timothy 1 7, which says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and sound thinking. And I don't know of three things that we need more of during this time than love and power to accomplish in us what we can't do ourselves and the ability to think clearly in uh, discerning what the right solutions are for us to be able to effectively live today. Mm. I would also offer this that I think is, has been really helpful for those that I've talked to. If we can establish a routine, we need routine during this time. We need routine that provides appropriate self-care. We need routine that gives us a sense of purpose. We need routine that's going to get us outside of ourselves and, th and being thoughtful of somebody else. Mm. Because I know for me, when I'm in my head by myself and I'm fretting about my situation or I'm what ifing it and I'm in the future, that's not helpful at all. And all it does is just throw gas on an already uh, hot and burning stress fire. Yes. Let me interrupt you. That resonates with me. I was even talking to our, our church elders this early this morning. Um, we've been reading uh, Scazzaro's Emotionally Healthy Spirituality mm -hmm. book. Quick, quick shout out on that book. That's a great book. We've, we've been reading together. Yeah, it's really right up, right up there. Yeah, you're, you're the one that first recommended that to me back in the day. So I'm grateful. Um, but one of the things we were reading about is, um, uh, oh my goodness, I just lost my train of thought here for a second. Um, we're recording this live, aren't we? <laughs> oh, I know what it was. It was um, the fact that we we really do need to connect with each other, and we're just we're just convicted that we have got to provide opportunities, it, even in this this time period where we're disconnected, where we can't come together. Uh, we don't have as many groups in our in our church as I would like. We've got about 15, 16 groups, I think, right now. Uh, and the church our size, that's that's not very many groups. We've got a big church. And we are just committed. We, we've got to come up with a way to mobilize some folks and invite people into step, just like you're stepping daily into your 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 AA group, just to just to be around some people, just to hear some other people thinking out loud, just to to recognize you're not alone. Um, much, much less bring something of yourself to contribute. Uh, and so I think that's one of the convictions we've had is to try to bring that for our people. Yeah, and you know, honestly, what, what we give, and, and this is what I tell others in different situations as well, what we have to offer, that we don't need to have answers because most of us don't have answers. Right. You know, we're making this stuff up as we go. What they do need is presence. Yes, presence, yes. Yes, I, that's a good word is for anybody who's watching this who recognizes I really do need connection with people. I miss people. I miss, I, I, I wonder if I'm all alone in this, in this sense or that sense. Man, to take a risk and to be with a few people in a group that we can provide or anything like it, just to be present, not to bring anything of value in, in of your, themselves, but they will find other people that are doing the same thing and the value that we get to, we get to bring just in our presence. I think that's huge. I feel like as a pastor, you've taught me this, just being present with people is half my job. You know, yeah. it's not because I know a whole lot. It's not because I have all the answers. Yeah. I'm, pain, I'm painfully aware the older I get that God is bigger and bigger and I know less and less. And yet if I just show up and be with people, yeah. I am being God's instrument of love and, um, I'm, I'm helping them be grounded in what's true, even if I'm not offering a whole lot. So that, that's a good word. I know the other thing I thought of that you made me think of, RJ, we were talking about this this morning. Um, my brain's paused for a little bit there. Um, by, the, by the way, just to comment on that, and yeah. that's for you, Lauren, and for all of us, one of the main um, symptoms of, of stress is forgetfulness, lack of concentration, yeah. And uh, my neighbor, who I've known for years, forgot my name yesterday. Wow. She had, and interestingly enough, I was outside talking to her because she found a gun underneath her. Someone had stuck a gun. He probably had committed a crime and put the gun under one of her patio chairs. Oh, my goodness. So we were having a nice little chat about that. <laughs> and she forgot your name. I get it. No, I, 
I wish, you know, I mean, I'm 50, I guess I could be forgetting things more and more as I get older, but I have noticed is my brain's not working quite like yeah. it normally does. I think that's a symptom yeah. of the stress we're under, you yeah. know? Absolutely a symptom of the stress. Sleep yeah. disorder. Uh, I'm not sleeping. I, I, I'll confess this in front of everybody watching. I have a peace that God has given me that is real. I have a confidence in him and a perspective that I know is, is such a blessing to have. And I still am struggling to sleep. I'm waking yeah. up. Um, I'm waking up sometimes three, four, five times a night, and it's not because I'm an old man needing to go to the bathroom. That's that's coming, you know. Um, it's because I just my my mind won't turn off, and my I'm I'm just a little more tense, and so I I think that's something a lot of us are probably experiencing. I do want to finish this thought. I think it's important. I think you've struck on this is that there's something about getting beyond ourselves that is incredibly life giving in a way that is almost counterintuitive. Um, I think in some ways we've clicked into survival mode, which by default is a very inward way of living. Instinctive, yes. It's instinctive. It's, the, it's, self, it's a fight or flight. Syndrome. Yes, it's self-preservation. Yeah. And the downside of that is we forget that God made us for other people. God made us with, he, he gave us a mission to live out, which is other-centered. Uh, it's kingdom-minded. and it, it's when I talk to my neighbor, uh, like I did yesterday, a few houses down on the street, I'm looking down my street now. When I, when I got to talk to him for 20 minutes, it completely pulled me out of my stress and exactly. my funk because I, my heart ached for him. And my, I, re, I recognized what I might be able to do to help and bless him. And I think, I think we have to find ways to get beyond ourselves, even for our own sake, even for our own Absolutely. health. Sake. Yeah. Yeah. And, and think about, it. I'm going to, I'm going to offer here as we, as we finish up here in a little bit, I want to offer five questions that we need to be asking ourselves and our families every day. Okay. And okay. that's part of it. That's part of it because it's Good. so important, you know, and it doesn't have to be a big deal. We were, Ermi and I were, my wife is named Ermi. We were at uh, Sprouts the other day and tons of people and they're doing a good job of keeping everybody separate. And we were going through the checkout line and I could tell the checker was, pretty frustrated and I stuck my therapist hat on for a second and asked a scaling question. I said, so on a scale of one to 10, what, what would you say your stress is right now? And behind her mask, she said, it's a nine and a half. Oof. I said, can I pray for you? That God will give you some comfort during this time and he will give you some peace during this time. And I could see her, I could see her eyes just kind of well up. Mm. Hey, someone's thinking about me. Um, you know, people are incredibly vulnerable. Rick Thompson, in fact, this morning was telling our team that the, the, the Bibles are sold out, are sold out at, at uh, Christian bookstores because people are, are tender right now. They're wow. tender to spiritual things right now. So we have a unique opportunity um, to, uh, you know, I, I think I shared this last week, but the, the Chinese word for crisis is made up of two characters. One is danger, the other is opportunity. What a perfect descriptor of, of crisis. And, and the word for crisis in Chinese is also the word for stress. And I thought, yep. Oh, wow. That's it. Coming together. Hmm. So, um, so yeah, we, we have opportunities. But to do that, we've got to kind of get out of ourselves. And sometimes that has to be an intentional choice because it's so easy just to hunker down in my bunker and, and binge on Netflix all day long. And yes. each year, not helpful. That's a good word too. To, on that note, something I don't want to not ask you about because I respect how you take care of yourself physically. You mentioned the physical in general terms. Be specific about the, the essential nature of working out, of walking, okay. of jogging, and what that does for us. I think we know that intuitively, but I want to hear it from you who ran the Boston Marathon a couple years ago. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that is a huge part. And this is one of the things that I, I'm absolutely appreciating about this is that I've never seen so many people out in my life as they are now. Even in There's Colorado, people, right? Yeah, the, the other the, the, the other day I was riding and, um, and I was uh, on a side street and there was a guy, there were two guys one guy was on crutches, the other guy was in a wheelchair, and they were out. And I thought, you know what, I wish I had taken a picture of that, because that's what we need to do. We need to be outside. Because when you're outside and you're looking around, you're seeing what God has made that hasn't moved, 
you're looking at a blue sky that doesn't change. Yeah. You're looking at seasons that are constant. It's a reminder that there is a God and he is in control. Yeah. One of the first things I do in the morning is I, and I'm an early bird, you know, Lauren, I, I walk outside of my bathrobe and when it's dark and I'm hearing the robins mm. and that's a reminder to me that God's still in charge because mm. we forget that. And sometimes just being outside will remind us of that. But the other piece, and you alluded to it is, is, uh, is get moving, do something. Mm. Uh, if it's just a walk around the block, walk around the block, put on your face mask, walk around the block. You don't have to be a marathoner to do any, to, to, you know, to, to run far, just do something. Right. But get moving because for, just from a physical perspective of relating to stress, we have to be moving That's as good. much as we can. So, you know, maybe set a goal for yourself. Um, I, can't, I can't run like I used to because of, I've got a chronic foot injury that I'm still working on, as you know. But I'm riding. I'm riding my bike every day. And I'm telling you, it's the highlight of my day besides the time I spend in the morning with God. Mm. Um, all, the more the reason, biggest... all the more reason here, too, by the way, RJ. It's like 75 degrees here today, yeah. uh, 80 degrees maybe. And, um, I mean, this will be different in just a couple months here in Texas. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you guys got you're 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 full full uh full time springtime now. So yeah, spring springs you got some flowers blooming there and stuff. I'm guessing. Uh yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, flowers in Texas. I'm thinking. Yeah, Texas is a big state, RJ. It's like a whole other country. We've got. That's we've right. Got, I forgot it, about it that. It depends on what region you're in. The, the <laughs> topography is just crazy different everywhere. <laughs> Silly me. Silly me. <laughs> Well, I know you got five questions you want to give us. What else, if anything, I'm not trying to cut you off, but what else do you want to share with us? That One other thing, and then I want to share the five questions. One other thing is that we need to, we need to honor a couple things in our households. We need to give, allow each other to have our own private space. You need to be able to be by yourself. That's huge. Mm. You can't have this... Uh, together family time all the time every one of us including extroverts need that alone time that solitude time so i would encourage families to talk about boundaries to talk about spaces to not get hurt if a family member doesn't want to be with you to cut each other some slack i keep thinking of the passage in ephesians 4 3 forbear one another in love i think we need to do a lot of forbearing and i think that's the the part that sometimes God is going to have to give us because what might be a three level irritation normally is now a level six irritation because we're with them all the time. Mm. So we need to identify those, identify our feelings and maybe just talk it out a little bit so that we can kind of manage being a little more uh, accommodating with each other uh, as we're sharing the same uh, living space. That's a good word. That's a really good word. I can resonate with that. I'm I'm an extrovert who needs my own space. I'm in my my wife's closet um with I joked about it last Sunday with dresses and shoes all around me and it's just the only space I can find to close the door and not just you know record this with you but just to even have just some quiet space without kids in my ankles and needs all around me and so I I resonate with that completely. Okay. Well, let me finish up today with, uh, with five questions I would encourage everyone to write down and to, and to ask every day as a family. Okay. And I'll go ahead and say, well, in addition to a couple other resources we'll provide, we'll make sure we put these five, table, these five questions. Uh, we'll post this with the video as well. Perfect. Question number one, what am I or what are we thankful for today? That's good. Gratitude during this time is huge Gratitude. because it gets us out of the negative and it helps us to be mindful, not only of the positive, but the fact that God is in this and he's providing for mm. us. Mm. Good stuff. So what am I thankful for today? That's number one. Number two, who can I connect with to help encourage, serve, or just be present with today? I like the hashtag that's on TV. We're alone together. Mm. And even connecting a little ways makes a big difference. Just some intentionality with, with a person each day. A yeah. person. Yep. Good. yep. You don't have to become a bubbly extrovert, but connect with somebody today. And, a good. and that allows you to get outside of yourself. 
Number three, what of the old normal do I need to let go of today? Mm. Some of us are having a heart. Some of us who are really used to routine and the way things were are really struggling right now. Mm. You know, because we're, we struggle when we go to the stores. Are going to be, are there going to be enough groceries for me? Are we going to be able to get this or that or all the what ifs? And the truth, the truth is for all of us, and is that we're, we're going to have a new normal. We're at least going to have a new normal for a while. And for some of us, it's going to be a new normal for a long time. The loss of jobs, the change in careers. Mm. There's some legitimate grieving that needs to go, that's going to be going on here, Lauren. As, as difficult as, as it is to say, that's the reality of it. So there's letting go that we're going to need to do every day. And so I have to ask the question, what do I need of the old normal to let go of today? Okay, that's a good one. Number four, and this is really the flip side of that, what do I need to trust God with today? And I'm intentional about that word with, because this is not a, I'm trusting you, God, so you'd better do this for me today. No, what am I trusting with God today? All right, Lord, I, I, I need to just rest that you know best, that you're, you love me and you will provide for me, and I, I'm going to trust this with you today sometimes people need to see that so what i encourage them to do is put together a god bag just a brown paper bag and and uh, call it the god bag and if you're struggling with something write it down and stick it in the god bag and on the outside of it put philippians 4 6 and 7 don't worry about anything but pray about everything telling god what you need and then leave it with him mm. i like that i like that tangible physical nature of 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 living out that prayer just putting it in the bag i like that and then and then and then leaving it there yeah leaving it. don't go back and dig it out <laughs> dig it out and lastly how do i take care of myself today mm. how do i take care of myself physically how do i take care of myself emotionally how do i take care of myself spiritually and there's no substitute and i i save that one for last because i think sometimes that's, that's the one we forget. I'm really concerned about a dear friend of mine who is taking care of everybody else, but she's not doing a good job to take care of herself. A and here's the thing, here's the thing about stress, uh, Lauren, and this is, uh, again, another piece of Han Selby's uh, research. He developed what's called the uh, general adaptation syndrome, that when people experience a severe stress, uh, their their bodies, their their limbic system, their and their endorphins, their their their, their body is able to enlist the needed uh, resources to be able to handle it. It's like the power switch on a vacuum cleaner or a, a, a electrical tool where you need a little bit more surge. You can use it for a little bit, and then you crash. Mm. And so we're, we, this is this is the long haul. So many of us have survived with that kind of ability to survive initially, but we need to to drop back into a better better habits, healthier habits. For the I, this, long haul. this is why I wanted to talk to you today. This is why I want to provide this for our people because I think that's exactly where we are, RJ. We've had two, three weeks ish in our part of the world where this has gotten real. This has gotten hard. We've been reactive. The, those those uh, basic things have kicked in that we have that God gave us to help us cope. And to your point, we can't keep living like this. We you can't. Cannot. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to establish rhythms. We have to lean into some intentional things like you're talking about today. Um, it's timely. And uh, my heart is heavy for all of us as we, we try to adapt. Uh, and so... Why don't, why don't we wrap up with that, RJ? I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for you and the way you speak into my life. I thank you for speaking into all of us a little bit. Um, I want to point out to everybody, I, I want to ask you in just a moment to pray for us, RJ. Absolutely. Uh, and before you do, I want to, I want to make sure everybody knows, I'm going to put those five questions, post those with this video uh, that goes out. Uh, I also want to let you know, um, even as if, I've only been here about 21 months here in town, but we're starting to develop a good referral list of professional counselors here in town. And I'd love for you to email me, ljones at colonialchurch.com. 
and and just say, hey, I'd love, it's a private email, nobody will see it but me. I'd love you know, a referral to somebody that can help me. Maybe a pastor, one of us at church can help you. Maybe it's something beyond our pay grade and we can refer you to a professional like RJ uh, that can even do some some video chat stuff with you like I know they're willing to do right now in this season. Um, and so um, don't be shy about reaching out to us for any kind of help like that. Um, in fact, but I'm normally not a, a one that speaks in hyperbole, but I'm going to say this anyway. Your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. Mm. This thing's for real, and the impact on us because of stress is for real. And and now's the time. And God is doing something. I believe with all my heart, God is in this. Uh, I'm, as you know, I'm connected with people all over the world, and God is up to something significant. I think He's doing something in our churches. I think He's doing something in our families, and I think He's doing something in each one of us. Mm. And, you know, we, we, I've come to realize how many outer props I depend on for my well-being that I don't need. And God is saying, are you going to trust me? I got this. Are you going to trust me? I'm with you 100%. I, I can hear him asking this right now in the middle of all of it. Do you trust me? Are you going to trust yep. me? Yeah. Thank you, RJ. My would you, pleasure. Would you, uh, selfish request, would you pray for Colonial Church uh, and all of our folks that are, are leaning into you today. Would you just pray over us, please? You bet. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time that Lauren and I can just talk as friends, as brothers in Christ, as, as fellow pastors, as, as, um, as your men, as your shepherds who have you've called us to, to lead well. And Lord, we want to lead well. And I do pray for Lauren. I pray for his past, his staff, his uh, his paid and volunteer staff there at Colonial Lord, that you will just anoint them with your with your power and your your endurance. That uh, they'll be they will be able to remain under this and, and do it well, and not just survive well, but live well. And Lord, that you will give them the tools that they need, give them the resources they need, both in the church and outside the church, uh, to support each other, uh, to reach out to their community. I do pray uh, for your protection for their church from this uh, wicked virus, Lord, that you will protect each person uh, from that uh, at Colonial. And Lord, that uh, for, for each of us, as, as we look at our own lives, as we look at our own families, that uh, in, in many ways that we'll get back to the basics with you uh, of a primary relationship with you of trust and dependence each day. And Lord, that will, um, for those of us who, who struggle, not just because of what is, but because it reminds us of something in our lives that was, and that was tremendously tra traumatic. I pray especially for those people that you will give them an extra sense of your power and healing presence as they move forward. So Lord, we commit all of this to you. We pray for the financial resources uh, for his church and for the, those that have lost jobs. We just pray for your provision and your protection. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, RJ. Thanks for your, your friendship. Thanks for your help. My pleasure, Lauren. I know uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you. You said you were going to share a promise before we closed up today. Yes. I, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share one from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay that says this, that it's more of a reminder and a perspective, but it's one of my favorite verses. And I wanna, I wanna jump ahead and then I wanna read the verse that I wanna read. I wanna start with verse eight because we can, we can appreciate this. Verse eight of chapter four of Second Corinthians. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. But the promise goes back to verse 7. We now have this light shining in our hearts, and we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Yes. Love it. Thank you, RJ. You're welcome, Lauren. My pleasure. Thank you, Colonial, for being a part of my life. Yeah. Blessings, brother. Hey, take care.